So Ben, I've done a little bit of research on you and, and Star Sports, and I think most people in the greyhound industry would be a little bit surprised. They think about this guy who, for our mem most of our memories, goes back to Walthamstow, doing a few quids, you know, battling in, in there in the uh, up against the punters at Walthamstow. Um, given the, the way the betting industry has gone, I guess there'd be a lot of people surprised that Star Sports is even still around, given that so many of the independent bookmakers have, have, have crashed and burnt. My understanding is that since your very early days, the business has just grown and grown and grown, and um, you're into all kinds of other things now. Starting at, at sort of day one, um, back to Walthamstow, back to what you were doing, how has the business grown? What stage are you at now? How many betting shops do you have for a start? Let me, uh, we're up to about 20 shops to answer that one, but um, let me uh, quote Warren Buffett. He was once asked by somebody, he said, uh, so uh, you show us all of these deals that you do. You tell us how you do it. You can have shares in Bar Berkshire Hathaway. There's no secret like a, a football betting syndicate where you could spot their pattern. You can see what he's invested in and it's all been for the long term. Um, and he's invested in, in people who he believes will go on to run a business better and expand it further. And it's all very, very simple. And uh, the, the person says to him, but Mr. Buffett, if it's all so easy and this is how it is. Why doesn't everybody do that? And Warren Buffett looked back and said, because nobody else wants to get rich slowly. Building quality, building a group of companies that comes together takes a lifetime. When I won the 10 grand on the horse school pension fund and I came back, I used to, I wasn't old enough to be a bookie. So I used to go racing with a chap called Barry Slaney, who was the dad of a friend of mine. And, it, and this was when it was boards on, wasn't boards on rails, you just put the flap over and you'd call out a price. So a horse would be five to four in the ring, you'd have to go six to four to lay it. And, mm -hmm. you know, yeah, I, I learnt, learnt, started learning some more hard life lessons there about laying over the odds, right? Okay. Um, and my 20s, really, from, that, for, from when I was 20 years of age, was about making endless mistakes. Harry McAdam, uh, he, 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 this is a very, very important photo of my life. There's Harry. Um, ha Harry set out at the same time uh, when his parents paid for him to go to Eton and then um, Oxford or Cambridge, whatever it was. I'm sure that they were also de de delighted when he became a bookie. <laughs> yes. <laughs> uh, um, so but anyway, slope. He, yeah, he, he had slippery slope, but he set out along the same way. Um, but one thing, uh, we used to have very, very long conversations, but we didn't allow ourselves to repeat errors. Right. So my 20s was about endless self-inflictions, mm -hmm. endlessly getting knocked by people, mm -hmm. endlessly having warm punters get into me where I believe what they wanted me to believe, because I then think I could make money because I wanted to believe that. Right. And then really things changed on my 30th birthday. And I'll tell you why. Right. Because I, wa I spent the whole day walking around Hove Park really beating myself up going what on earth have i achieved and done in the last 10 years i've had a go at lots of things i'm still here i'm mm. still standing but i'm covered in bruises mm -hmm. and i decided that those bruises actually were lessons to never repeat and to be a stronger person then that you didn't have to employ everybody on mates rates. Some have survived on it, but you didn't have to employ mm. everybody that, that asked for a job. Yeah. You didn't have to give every punter credit. You didn't have to believe every punter's story that was, um, oh, the, but this is why you'll make so much business or commission agents saying, oh, I've got some wonderful business for you to lay. It's so wonderful that they didn't want to lay it themselves. Mm. Do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Right, okay, and I decided to toughen up. And in my 30s, I quickly made ground. Mm -hmm. And I believe that once you then make that decision to go long-term and to build organically, mm -hmm. um, Pat Cooney, very nice chap, you'll yes. know him, he's yes. the Bet365 man. 
Um, Pat Cooney came and had a, a chat with me at uh, Toaster once. What an amiable guy, right? And I said to him, well, I'm never going to meet Denise Coates because nobody's ever met her. What advice would she have for me? Mm -hmm. And he said, uh, he, he, he knew like that. He said, Denise, as soon as they start um, moaning and saying they want to go and work somewhere else, they're not happy, they want more money, they're this, they're that, and all the other staffisms, she says, that's okay, bye. Yeah. Loyal, staying the trip, good at the job, she overpays. Yeah. Right? And I think it's very, very important to incentivize and look after, you know, if you've had a good Cheltenham, you know, there's an extra month's pay or whatever, yeah. you know, look after, make sure people have got the booper, you know, where possible, if where, where, where we've got the properties, they can go and use a property for a holiday or whatever. When people get married, when they have a baby, when they're moving house, I try to make sure that I'm here, there to help for those occasions yes. because I'm as as I said with a punter I'm looking to marry a punter not not have a one night stand yeah. and I'm looking to build an empire which will go on after me mm -hmm. which by the time I pass I'm not that probably don't have much to do with it yeah now I, 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 I'll give you a business analogy right the best analogy person in the game is Bill Esdale who does our adverts but I, I shall try and follow him even though I'm not a football person. Mm -hmm. When you start out as a bookmaker or a professional gambler, you are the striker. Mm -hmm. You run with the ball at the other team's goalie, you shoot at goal, you miss or you score. As you build your business, you build a team and you come back in the field to be a sort of attacking defender, right? Or a defending midfielder mm -hmm. and you play the ball through. Yeah. Then one day, you come off the field and you become a manager. And you run up and down the pitch line shouting at everybody. Mm -hmm. And occasionally, when they need a goal, when they need someone who can make a basis change, you're bought on for eight minutes. And you, yes. must, you must make that. You have to change. You have to pivot for the team. Yes. Yeah. Okay, because only, only the leader will do that. Mm -hmm. Right? Okay. Then one day, the pressure of the battleground will be too much. That happened to me a few years ago. We had some massive punters playing in the summer. And um, I was on holiday uh, with my family. And um, I just burst into tears. And I said to my managing director, I don't think I've got it in me anymore. I don't think I can be dealing with these punters who are so aggressive, mm -hmm. right? These extreme alpha males playing with head to head. I can't, I can't be dealing with them anymore. And the endless, like they'll say or do anything to get the more credit, to get the 202, the evens chance to, to mm -hmm. push for more and more on. And, and why can't I have this? And like that combat, yes. right? Arm to arm combat, a combat, you know, it's like, bare knuckle boxing yeah yeah dealing with these people right so then you become a chairman mm -hmm. and then you see the group of companies that you've created that link into each other each have the same management team so they're aligned so they so they're not it's, it's not not together you understand the star spreads has the same management as star sports yeah the shops of course we have a head of shops, but Russ, the managing director, he's over each of them. The spreads gives punters to the fix. The fix gives punters to the spreads. We get big high rollers out of the shops to go to bet with the fixed on the on course. I'm every person who's got the binoculars with the members badges over or they have a big bet they look like a regular punter do you bet online I'm, i give them a pull do you bet online do you bet on the phone we can do a service here's a leaflet about the company da 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 you, you understand yes they all link into each other anyway all day i deal in risk but i deal in margin mm -hmm. but that margin comes with great zigzags because I will never, ever be able to compete with Ladbrokes or Paddy Power or Bet365 or Skybet for five and ten pound punters. No. I'm not going to have a red button on the TV controller. I'm not going to ever have Ray, Rin Ray Winston representing me, right? Okay, um, I, I, I hope to one day, but I'm not going to have a thousand betting shops or whatever, mm -hmm. right? That's going to be a, a lot further down the line, please God. 
okay? Yeah, um, so I've got to run my own race. I will never compete with them for a five or 10 pound punter. But they'll never, but remember, you can't give Bog eight places on the golf money back when something unfair happens, no rule for da 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 da, yeah? If you're laying 50 grand punters, so they can never compete with me. Yes. But when you lay 50 grand, 100 grand, half a million pound punters, big gamblers, even when you lay them on your terms and you say, no, you can only play five minutes before the off, these people, they like hitting into three on shots. You see, it's, it's one, of the, one of the songs that all of the bookie haters and punter sympathisers love to, to sing. It's, oh, it's, it's awful when a punter goes on the chase. Mm. Let me tell you something about being a, a, a credit bookmaker who takes on high rollers. I get my money two or three days a year. Because these people are so strong, they're so alpha, they'll keep hitting until they get out on the day, until yes. they get level, until they hit the front. Yes. Then a couple of times a year, I'll get one or two million quid in a day off them. And I get paid. Yeah. Because guess what? The three on got beat. Then the four on fell. Then, so, then, then, then the even money chance. And when they bet the, the second in at three to one, they bumped into each other and a rag one. You, you, you understand? Yeah, I do. Right, so, but I have to stay with them. Like, like, like Muhammad Ali, rope-a-dope, when he was bouncing off the ropes and it's like Foreman's giving it to him, wasn't he? Bang, bang, bang. Like Foreman's knackered, bang at the end. Bang! Knocked him down. Yeah. That's what I do. Yeah. I'm not, I, I'm not flashy. I have to stay the trip. And in the mud at Fontwell, when you saw McCoy and they'd had the money on and he, he'd gone 80 and running and he was out the back, he still rode that horse right to the line and through the line, didn't he? Yeah. And that's why he still got them to want to mm. win. Now that's how you win as a credit bookmaker. Mm. You cut off a punter's edges where you can. If they keep playing, eventually you'll find the way to beat them. They will keep getting out because they're wealthy, because they're strong, because they're richer than you. Mm. But eventually they won't. And that value will come back, but it will come back in one go.